What's up, everybody? What's Welcome up? back to the Love and Rice podcast with your host, Aunt Ma. I'm your other host, Christina. And if you guys are new to this podcast, make sure to subscribe and follow. We are on all podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, iHeartRadio. Um, also, we're on TikTok and Instagram. So please give us a follow, subscribe, comment. I saw in the last video on YouTube, you guys commented on some topics, which was great. And, uh, you know, you guys just keep going ahead and commenting. Let us know what you want to hear because we love discussing them here on Love and Rice. So on today's podcast, we're going to be talking about the tipping culture and how crazy it has gotten since we were young. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like back in the days, tipping was, uh, I don't know, it was the standards are different nowadays. And I want to talk about all this because what are we supposed to do now? And do we feel like the workforce, the customer service, is the quality is still up there to be tipping that much? You know what I mean? So what are some changes that you've seen from the past till now in terms of tipping? I mean, I feel like it's just getting getting out of hand now because like we, we've been in the service industry for a long time, like yep. back then too. Yep. I used to work in a restaurant. Yes. I used to be a server, a busboy, and I knew that you would have to bust your ass to get good tip. You know what I mean? Yeah, so like when you're talking about how much it's changed from now compared to before, I feel like we really worked very hard because we knew that we had to earn our tips right? and that we provided good service. Like I felt like I always gave good service no matter what. I was always checking on people and I wasn't always like, oh man, like they better tip me and this is the minimum and it doesn't matter what kind of service I give that you're just going to tip me. You, you know, know what I mean? Working in the restaurant industry, I've never provided service thinking I'm going to get a good tip. I provided service because I cared for the people to have a great meal and a great time during their experience. Yeah, and for me, um, I was a bartender and I was also a cocktail waitress and also kind of like a waitress too. Um, but... Yeah, like I, I always tried to have fun at my workplace, but I always was professional, always made sure my customers were good, uh, made sure that they were having a good time, that they got everything that they needed. And I would always like, I always just made sure to follow up with them to make sure they didn't need anything else. Yeah. And, and to me, I was always like, oh man, um, if they tip me cool, if I didn't, like I probably did a bad job, but I knew like for sure I never did a bad job. I mean, if I didn't get a good tip, I would think, okay, the person doesn't have that much money yeah. or they're struggling or they're that time in their life where, yeah, they they just don't have that much money, right? And so I'm always okay with that because you can't expect anyone to tip good. Uh, I mean, I, I just, like I said, I never expected anyone to tip good. Just just do something. Do what you can, right? It doesn't there you go. matter. Yeah. Do what you can. That, that's all I ever expected from someone. Yeah, I think even when I was working as a bartender, like I love my job so much and having the opportunity to be able to bartend where I was like, you know, I'm surprised that people are, are tipping like per drink that I make. Right. Because yeah. I'm like, you're already paying for this much for a drink and all I'm doing, I'm making it for you. I'm getting paid by the hour for it. So I'm like, cool, if you want to tip me. But also, if you don't like I get it, you know, what is the reason that people need a tip? Like why? I think it's just more so of showing their appreciation for the service that you're providing. So it's like how you're talking to them, making sure that you're taking care of them, making sure that they like what you're bringing for them. For for me specifically, as the bartender, I'm the one responsible for their drinks, right? right? So I'm making sure that however I'm making it, I'm making it correctly and to their standards. You know, to add to that, I feel like experience is another great reason of why you should tip someone uh, appropriately because not every server nowadays has experience in right. terms of not just customer service and how you treat people, but, you know, being able to see all your tables, making sure they have enough water without having to flag you down for a refill on water, yes. but also the sanitation. And I feel like the education on sanitation has gone down so much. Yeah. I, and I mean, it makes me not want to tip the person where they're not educated on sanitation, you know? And, and what I mean by that is let's say someone brings you some bowls or some cups, right? That you asked for. And I, I appreciate you guys bringing it over, but what I don't appreciate is your fingers inside the bowls and inside the cups. You know, we've learned when we get our sanitation certificates 
that you have to hold everything on the outside, ex- the bottom of the bowls, outside of the bowls, the cups. But when people like put their fingers in it and then hand it over to you, you're just yeah. like, what? And that happens a lot too because we actually notice these things and they're like, tr- there's four of us in the family, yeah. right? So they're bringing four cups over and it's like holding all the cups with water and it's like fingers inside and bringing it over right. and I'm just like, can I have a straw? Because I don't want to put my mouth on the cup that you just had your fingers right. all over. And like sometimes you will see their finger in the water and it's like they just it's, bring it over. And Yeah, it's know. pretty bad. I mean, even if, you know, because we have kids, we got to ask every time, can we get some extra spoons, mm-hmm. forks for the kids? And so, you know, normally I would, when I give it to the, to the table, I would wait for them to reach out to grab it. You know, but a lot of servers just put it on the table. Mm-hmm. And to me, I'm a little bit of a germaphobe i get pretty you, disgusted little, when <laughs> well i mean because i know how dirty things well, because are because you've been in the industry right? so you kind of understand so it's really really difficult to have good workers where you are required to have this sanitation bucket full of sanitation water that needs to be changed out every so often right and most restaurants don't ever change it out until hours and hours and hours later and so the same towel that they use in the bucket that's cloudy and dirty they're going to use to wipe down the table for a new customer but it's the same towel over and over again so we're just kind of smearing dirt all over the table you yeah know what I mean? and these are so, things i never knew until right. i started dating you because you were working in the field and every time like you we would see or to like someone like me right who hasn't had that experience like if you see them doing certain things like with the towels or however way they're serving things right you're just like oh you know that towel hasn't been washed or you know it's not deep clean oh you know like there was a, a, a restaurant that I used to like their salads. Mm-hmm. And then you would tell me that, oh, well, I don't know. Like, I, I forgot what it was. Like, sometimes the ladle will fall into the dressing and, and the workers would just dip their hand in to grab it and, like, right. not even wash their hands and stuff. So I was like, oh, gosh, yep. it, it doesn't make you think about the Like, you don't think about these things until someone points it out to you. When you think about, you know, those dirty utensils going on a dirty table that was, quote, unquote, just cleaned. Mm-hmm. And like you said ladles for salad dressing going into the big bucket that they have and in in a busy restaurant you know you love going to busy restaurants because that means they're they're great right they're good but when they're busy there's less care so when ladles drop into the salad dressing bucket they're putting their hands in there to grab it you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and it's disgusting but like uh it's going to be the best tasting food you've ever had. Yeah, and I think <laughs> I think we bring up these things because it's like you wouldn't know because whatever happens in the, in the kitchen stays in the kitchen, right? But then I think it's more so of like observing the service around you and, and seeing how these servers and, and busboys and other employees are handling your stuff when you're like asking for it. Sometimes it's not even just them. It could be the restaurant. So, for example, I don't expect people to have a spray bottle and spray down every table and wipe it because you don't have to do that. Mm-hmm. As long as you have your sanitation water that's clean in that sanitation bucket and you're using that, that's enough to clean the table. But when you refill your bucket, sometimes the restaurants, they're very low on a sanitation solution. So it's not even their fault. It could just I be see. water. You know what I mean? So it's, sometimes it's up to the restaurant and the managers to upkeep the levels to keep it clean. But... That's why I'm saying like this kind of all falls into tips because it's not just about service of putting the food on my table, but it's also how clean you can be with my food. Yeah, and that's when it gets tricky because when you see these things, it makes you question if it's just the, the lack of care, the lack of experience, or just like the lack of the knowledge. Like there's something yeah. missing it's the upper management that's not teaching every new person that's coming in saying, hey, this is how we hold things. Uh, we never put our thumbs out on a bowl to serve to people, things like that. We don't put stuff on the tables. Uh, the reason is because upper management is so busy. There's mm-hmm. always just one upper management, like a general manager or a manager that's running the whole restaurant. And they don't have time to train every single server. They ask another server to train the new person so you know it gets watered down every time right right so i guess that leads me to my next question then because you've been in the restaurant industry for so long like 
How does tipping work with that? Because I know typically that the servers are the ones that are dealing with the employees directly, mm -hmm. but then um, don't they have to tip out? I don't know if they tip out the hostess nowadays. I know before hostess didn't get tips and then there's the bus boys and then if there's a bar, like the bartenders get something too. Like how does that work? It depends on the restaurant, right? So if it's a casual restaurant, casual fine dining or fine dining, like a casual restaurant, like I would say maybe... Um, Denny's, okay. Okay. They're probably not tipping the host, right? That's normal. Yeah. Um, they would. There's a percentage that they would tip out to the bus boys, mm -hmm. okay, and that's it. Now, other restaurants like maybe a, a a sushi restaurant, for example, okay, a sushi restaurant they probably have higher standards mm -hmm. to where the server has a percentage to tip out to that company might do the host or and hostess or not. But they are doing the percentage for the bus boys. They might have a percentage for food runners if there are food runners there. And then there's a percentage for sushi chefs. Right. You know, so um, I like that as being a sushi chef for like six years that I was getting tipped, you know. And then when there's people at the sushi bar, you get even more tips mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But oh, so you would get tipped directly from customers and then you would also get tips um, like a percentage. From at the, the end of the day. Okay. Yeah. So whether that restaurant does per server tips that goes out or it's a community pool of tips and then gets spread out that way you know so i guess how would people usually tip out like if they're not sitting at the sushi bar right and then they're just dealing with the server like if they wanted to tip more out to this the sushi chef because and the server was like the service wasn't as good can they just like give a little bit to them and then just give it directly to the chef i've seen that all the time oh, okay yeah so good to know uh, i mean even me as when i first started the restaurant business um, and I was a bus boy like one of my first jobs and I wouldn't get that much tip right maybe like 30 40 bucks in the day mm -hmm. that comes from the percentages of the servers but by the end of the night I actually end up getting like 80 to 100 bucks because the people see me busting my ass and the uh, the customers would give me extra five bucks extra oh, ten cool. bucks you know what I mean they they, they see the hustle and so I get a lot of side tips from those people. And then the servers, they kind of fight over like which bus boys will be helping them for the day. You know, it's oh. not every table. Sometimes it's just a section and that bus boy works that section. Mm -hmm. So the servers, when they recognize that they have a good bus boy helping them, like their assistant, they will give more. Oh, so I used I to see. have a server that would give me a higher percentage. And that's because he has to do less work because I right. take some of his workload off. Okay, that's you know what cool. I mean? Yeah. So I would, as a busboy, I would make eighty to hundred bucks a day, which is in a in a regular casual restaurant. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which is that's like pretty good. that's three times the amount of any other busboy. Yeah. You know, so it's all about that. Um, th th this is all the stuff that I really consider when I tip. It's just. The whole experience. Yeah, you know what and, I mean? and I think it's good for people to know because even for me, like I didn't really understand like who gets tips and who doesn't. Yeah. Um, because then when I was I, I had a hostess job before at like a Japanese restaurant too. Yeah. It's kind of like a hibachi place. And then um, you know, I was responsible for like taking orders and just getting it prepared right and bagging it up and stuff like that. And um we probably I think we made minimum wage and we didn't get tips. So I don't know if it was up to the customers to tip, but for the most part, I feel like usually hostess don't get tips from customers, especially for takeout orders. So for me personally, like um, I didn't feel like I was entitled to it. But once I found out that I didn't get tipped out really for it, I was just like, mm, I don't think this is what I want to do. If I want to work th in this industry, I'd rather work as a server position or something else to be able to start getting tips. Then it yeah. would be more worthwhile for me. So this kind of all comes to mind where I'm like, Think, I'm always thinking, back in the days, we had so much quality control over the experience. Right. And at that time, people were tipping anywhere from 8% to 12%. Mm -hmm. That was a standard. 12% was really, really high. Most people just tip 10%. Yeah. You know, True. this was like in, in the 90s, early 2000s, you know. And just, I think, once COVID came, it's gone crazy to the point where it's uh, 15, 18 like and sometimes those are the minimums, too, minimums, that they would put right. on the receipts. Yeah, now on the receipt, some of them I see a minimum of like 18% all the way to like 20-something percent. Yes. And I'm like, what? 
that's like the price of an appetizer that I have to give up. Yeah, you know, you know what? And I know a lot of people, they say that, well, because that was like in ancient times where you're only tipping like 8 to 12 percent. Um, and they're saying like, oh, well, the economy, you know, the prices of everything that's gone up. You got to take all of things into consideration. But at the same time, like you're still you would still be tipping that amount on the new amount. So that amount has obviously increased for like the food that you're purchasing yeah. and it, it's, they're still getting more, but where, how do you justify that now the minimum should be like 15%, 20%? I mean, to, I, yeah. I, I think what's fair is 15%, but 15% before taxes. Yes. You know? So sometimes on the receipt, you'll see the, 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 the suggestions on the tips and some restaurants put before taxes of that price and some put, after taxes. A lot put after you know? taxes, yeah. And I want to tell you guys right now, do not tip... The government? <laughs> after taxes. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, tip from the subtotal amount of your food because there's no reason why you should be doing it for the percentage of after taxes. You know, it just... I, I, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to I me. I mean, that could be the minimum, but if people feel like they want to be more generous, like... Yeah, if they're pre good, I will do that. Yeah, pre-tax would be like the the minimum, right? And then if you want to put more on top of that, sure, go for it, you know. But for us, like usually we do it pre-tax. Yeah, I mean, I, I do like 15% nowadays. Um, and it really depends on the server that we have. Yes. If they seem like a good person and they really care about, uh, the, the, you know, what we're eating and stuff like that, um, I, I would do it 15% and after tax. You know, because it's only like another dollar. But when I see people who don't care and they're kind yeah. of rude, they don't come back, refill the waters, I got to keep asking them for stuff, I will bring it down to like 12%. Yeah, um, I think for me, because I because I've worked so many jobs when it comes to tipping also and service has always been such a big thing, um, I just feel... You can tell the difference between people who actually really do care and people yeah. who don't care at all, like when they're um, providing service to you. And I tend to be more strict when it comes to that. So it's like we've had bad experiences where it's like, oh, they don't check on us at all. We're constantly trying to find them, ask for water, like the minimum things, right? Like, hey, oh, we don't have our utensils. We don't have napkins can we get water? And then you're constantly having to flag them down for water. Then I'm like, mm. like, I just don't want to tip you at all. But obviously, like, we're not going to do that. We are still going to tip you. Right. And like, I don't know. I just feel like there are a lot of employees now that do that because, you know, going out to eat is convenient for us because we're so busy. So yeah. sometimes we're just like, oh, shoot, we only have this much time. Let's go take the kids and go eat real quick. And um, like they just they do the bare minimum. And I'm not saying for for all people. Right. But a lot of them do the bare minimum and they're like still expecting tip yeah. from you. you when, know? when do you tip extra? I tip extra when I feel like they're constantly checking in on us or they do extra things that I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Like, um, what is it like? I don't know. I like restaurants that um, because we have kids, they cater to them. So it's like they have these cool little water cups for them or they'll bring yeah. like extra bowls, like kid bowls and kid plates and utensils and all these cool things for them, you know. And then I'm like, oh, that's that makes our lives easier that they yeah. do it without us having to ask and stuff. So it's things like that. Um, you know, one yeah. of the one of the um, besides the experience right off the bat when I tip extra is when one of the servers is one of our fans or one of our mm. viewers or one of our listeners. And they yes. say, hey, I've been watching you for a long time. And I'm like, okay. So I, I instantly tip those guys like 20%. Yeah. You know, so if you guys are serving us at a restaurant, you are getting extra tip from us, okay? Because we appreciate the support that you've given us throughout all these years. And that's our only way to give back to you. So we give a little extra every time. So I appreciate it when you guys uh, say what's up when you see us at the restaurant. And I like when you guys say, actually tell us too. Like a lot, like a lot of the times, they're like, yeah. "Oh yeah, we watch you guys, or we used to watch you when we were younger." Da -da -da. I'm like, "Oh, that's so cool," you know, just yeah. to like actually be able to see people from like not behind the screen, right. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you say about carry out now? Carry you know? out. Um. Or like, so there's carry out yeah. where they ask for tips. And then there's places like uh, when you go buy a drink, like a boba, a coffee. Oh, like and they're Starbucks also asking for tip as well. Right. Yeah. When you're going to get boba or any 
any drink place, honestly, I've noticed now, it's like whether it's the drive through or it's like at the register. The register, especially, I hate going to order, like if I'm ordering one drink and it's already like $8 for a boba drink, right? And then they turn the screen over and it's like, oh, tip. And then it gives you the amount. I'm like, and they're right there watching you. And I'm like, no, because you're just, you're working and you're getting paid to work. Like I, I wouldn't. I don't know. I don't feel like it's necessary to tip for carry out items. I do if they do extra. So I, I normally don't tip on carry outs and, and drinks. But if they if I ask for extra sauces and they give it to me or if I have a million questions at a new place I've never been to and they answer it all, mm. I, I'm going to give the, extra, the, the tip on a carry out. You I know see. What I mean? yeah, yeah. But if it's just a normal like, hey, I'm going to just go order a uh, one entree and I'm out, I'm not tipping. If I'm just ordering a boba, I'm not tipping, dude. Like, it, I don't know. I think it's just a standard that they ask. Because sometimes the person behind the counter is just like, you don't have to tip. You know what I mean? Right. Like, they totally understand it. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. Like, there's there's that. And then there's always the other ones where it's like, uh, uh, would you guys like to donate to this charity after too? And you're like, no, because I don't know where the hell it goes. Yeah, from you know what, what I've heard with that with companies is that they've already donated donated that amount to the organization based and off what just, they made, right? And they're just collecting that money from you to like help cover the cost of it. Mm, yeah, I see. Yes, that makes sense. Um, how about drive throughs? You ever tip at a drive through? Usually, no. I mean, unless I'm feeling generous and I'm getting like coffee or something. Um, then I'll be like, oh, okay, cool, sure, you know, because my, my drinks can get complicated at times. Yeah. Like, you know that, like, you would never be able to order my my order for me. But um, other than that, usually I don't because it's, like, so quick. But also, I feel like I sound like a Karen right now. But I think because we've been going on so many, like, road trips back to L.A., like, we're constantly having to just get fast food and stuff. Because yeah. we're like, okay, we got to pick up the kids from school. We got to head to L.A. right now. We got to pick up food really quickly, right? So we're like, okay, this is the most convenient way to go and pick up food. And we just went through this experience, um, like, over the weekend. Like, we went to, to go get some Sonics. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to bash you guys. But um, we went there, and I ordered, like, an all-American dog. And we, mm -hmm. you, we waited there, right, for a while. And then when they brought the food over, finally, um, my hot dog was supposed to have uh, relish, onions, ketchup, mustard. And then when I got it, it was just like the hot dog. It was just the bun and the hot dog. And I was like, uh, let me go look through the menu real quick to see, like, is this how it's supposed to be? Because we paid like how much for this just to be like a plain right. hot dog. And we ordered on the app where you pick all the stuff that you want on Right. There. But then, yeah. And you did check all of them off. And then at the same time, we were stressed because we were like, should we just go relax and sit down at a restaurant and just eat? Or should we just quickly come to this uh, fast food place and order stuff and go? Yeah. And then um, our son was also starting to feel sick, right? He was feel feeling feverish. And we're like, oh, shoot. Like, we got to go to CVS next door to go get him some medicine. Yeah. And then you came back out. I'm like, we got to go back to Sonic's. They didn't put anything in my food. It was literally an hour <laughs> yeah. to get our order correct at Sonic's. Yeah, because we had to drive back, and then you had to like go back in the drive through line and wait, and it just took forever. And I was like, yep, yeah, we could have just sat down at a restaurant and relaxed yeah. and not stressed about it. So when when it comes to a lot of like fast food places now, um, I know that the there's a demand for the minimum wage to go up, right? Yeah. I get that. And then also now, like the service is very different. Because a lot of the times now, like, our food orders are not correct. We even had, yeah, this happened, like, another week ago, too, where they forgot to give the kids the chocolate milk. And we had to come back around. Yeah. We left, came back, you know. And that's why, for me, I'm like, just, if you can, just, like, please get our order right. That's where I what I'm thinking when we're in a yeah. fast food place. I'm not like, oh, my gosh, exceptional I mean, service. Let me tip you for getting our order correct. I if think, that makes sense. I think there should be some new laws in the food and beverage industry where, Everybody who works there needs to have a sanitation certificate all the way down to the dishwasher. Well, how does it work now? Like, how did it work before? Because was it just like... It's just uh, two people in the restaurant need it. Oh, yeah. so who who is responsible for educating the employees on sanitation and... The manager. Oh, but they don't. Oh, I see. So that's probably where things have gone wrong because 
if you did require everyone to get a certification, which also obviously costs money. No, but the restaurant should pay for it. It's only like 40 bucks. Yeah, that's what I'm saying because companies are trying. I feel like companies are trying to shortchange employees because they just like, want to pay them the bare min, like the minimum and just. You I, know I feel what like I mean? owners of restaurants don't understand how important it is. So, uh, I mean, e even workers, right? So, like, workers, kids who just got their first job, they're just like, okay, I'm just here to make money, right? Yeah. But they don't understand how serious handling food is. Some people get, so some people get sick. They can, some people can die. Like, it can get really, really bad. Mm -hmm. So, if they just paid their employees to go get a sanitation certificate, not only will they be educated more, but it'll make them take their job more serious and that, hey, I'm actually a server and it's not just a job. You know what I mean? Like, I, I get it. It's not that serious, but it, it just makes them more professional. Yeah, and I think maybe like the, the restaurants that pay more, they probably do invest in their employees that way and that's how they're also able to retain them. But if you're talking about like, fast food restaurants and all these like casual restaurants i feel like managers or, or companies don't want to invest that into employees because they're like oh well it doesn't matter because you know with this industry they're just gonna leave anyway so what are we investing in for so, so i get like, i get why they do it are they right for doing it no you know it, it's a big deal i mean there could be different policies where it's like hey if you are here for longer than six months uh we will we will refund you that that certificate money that right. you took. But if you quit within six months, we're not going to refund you that money. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. But why are places like In-N-Out so clean? All the way down to their bathrooms. Because they have a, a university. There you go. Yes. And people think, oh, it's because they get paid a lot. Yes, but no, it's because they have a university that teaches them everything from the top all the way down to the bottom. And their why sticks with them throughout the whole thing you know what i mean yeah because they're training them to be successful in and in different ways not just being like a worker at in and out but they're teaching you all these lifelong skills that you can actually take with you somewhere else but also they're taking care of their employees by giving them benefits too right, right. and they do pay them more than the usual standard for fast food restaurants right and that's why they stay and that's why they value their job more and that's why they take care of like the right. customers but i think it comes down to what you said is the university they're getting taught how to provide exceptional service yes you know yep. and and so the quality of that is just it's just subpar mm -hmm. so um i i wish every restaurant was like in and out where they would educate everybody and train them well and things like that yeah so that leads me to another thing right the the question to me is who should be responsible for um for taking care of the employees like financially should that responsibility be on the employer or does that fall on the customers what do you mean financially so like um a lot of people who justify um getting more tips for their service they are basically saying um you know well we get paid only a few dollars an hour um as servers and our our life depends on your tips so it's like they're putting that responsibility on the customers. And, you know, I was following like a few threads online and uh, a lot of people were like, hey, I'm a server, you know, like, yeah, we have to rely on your tips because we're only getting paid like two, three dollars an hour as a server. And um, like, is that, it, is that because of the restaurant that's doing it or because of the state that they live I in? I think it probably has to do with the state. I, I know out here, probably in California and Nevada, right? right. I, I think you get paid. In most states, you get paid the um, minimum wage, right? And then tips I mean, on top yeah, of that. Yeah, minimum wage is fine. But I know some states is really, really low and you can't survive off that. Yeah, like I but, know like in Utah, they get paid a few dollars an hour. But I wouldn't have the mentality of like, I rely on your tips to survive. Yeah, I have the mentality of I'm going to hustle to survive. And that's the difference with uh, people who, I mean, workers now compared to before because before we busted our ass to try to work for these tips and nowadays people feel like they're entitled to it it doesn't matter what kind of service you provide um they might think that they are providing the best service to you but for you you're like no Dick. yeah i mean I, I would see if it's okay if they don't have the experience but i would see if i see them trying 
that's enough for me. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm right? saying we're, too. We're all human. Yeah, and then we can see like sometimes we'll know when um, servers are new because they're like more timid, more shy, and you see them make a few mistakes, but they're like honest mistakes. Like they actually care you know about the job. I got a question for all you servers and busboys out there, the ones that that work in restaurants. If you don't have that much experience and a customer, you know, um, you know, says, hey, uh, you shouldn't be putting your fingers in cups and bowls. Would you want the person to teach you that and let you know? Or would you take that as uh, uh, as something bad and negative and be defensive about it? You know, because sometimes I want to educate the servers because I know they don't have experience in it. Yeah. But I don't know if they'll take it the wrong way. So, like, what do you guys think about that? Like, would you appreciate it? Or is that something that you would just be like, no, don't tell me what to do? I don't know. That's you know? a tricky one. And I think that's why we never really say anything to anyone. We see it a lot. And for us, we're just like, uh, okay, we'll just get straws. Or we'll just ask like, for a different cup of water from someone else <laughs> to bring out to us. Yeah, and I we mean, won't drink it. I, I feel like we should probably just tell the managers. And then the managers can tell the other people. And if the manager's not True. good, then that's just how the restaurant's going to be. You know, and I think that's most people, too, because you'll have certain people who will say something about it and then they get labeled as like Karen's and yeah. I don't know. What do they call guys? Ken's. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? But um, and that but at the same time, that's why they're not learning, because maybe their managers are so busy managing the restaurant and then pull, like or don't care. Yeah, either they care or they just don't see it because they're so busy. But we don't know that, you know, and it's hard to justify. So like going back to that question, like who should be responsible for for paying out the employees and taking care of them more financially is it on the customer or is it on the the employer i think it's on the employee themselves like i said it's the hustle mentality if you want to get good money you got to work for it i think it's as simple as that if you are applying for a job knowing that um that place only pays so much so you made the decision to work there and so if you think you're going to survive off tips and you need to do something about that, not demand it from mm, the customers, that is a good not way to demand put it. it from the employer. Yes. You chose to be there. Yeah. Because like I said, like with, with my hosted job, I was like, oh, OK, I'm just going to move on to the next thing because exactly. I want to be able to get paid more. And I'm not going to put that on anybody right. else but myself. So you would go work somewhere else. Right. And that was what a lot of people were saying, too. So the the. I don't know, the arguments were like, oh, if you're too cheap, like if you have money to go out to eat, like you should have money to tip people. Or if you're too cheap, just stay home and don't go out to eat. It's not always about that. Yeah, though. Like, but like other people were also justifying like, hey, but like if you know that you have to rely on tips to get paid and your employer is not taking care of you, move on, go somewhere else, find a different job yeah. that will pay you more. There's people who struggle financially and they eat at home all the time. And there's that one time where they're like, okay, I'm going to cheat myself out because I'm so tired and they might not tip so well. You know, it's just them in their situation. Mm -hmm. Don't take it out on them. You know, they're, they're trying to already uh, be they're They're already trying to do something for themselves, you yeah. know, so you can't judge everybody by how they tip. I'm not always trying to defend people who tip bad. I'm just saying like, you don't know what people are going through. Yeah. You know, most people, if they can tip more, they will. You know, they will. But there are those really frugal people who are just always like tipping very, very low. And you just really can't do anything about right. that. Right. I wouldn't let that ruin your day. It's just that's just one of those type of people. It could be their financial situation that they're in. And maybe they're already sacrificing um, not getting uh, more I mean, food that they need because they're like, I'm trying to save money. So if they're doing that, how can they be like, okay, well, I'm just going to tip more for the server. Well, <laughs> I've seen doctors tip very, very low. And I'm like, yeah. oh, crap. Yeah. That's really bad. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you never know what the guy went through. He could have just went through the craziest surgery and had the family like – talk shit about him all freaking day and he's like in a bad mood he's like you know what i'm trying to save lives and no one's appreciating it fuck that <laughs> i'm gonna tip a little bit yeah I mean, you know I what i mean know. like who knows right it, maybe their mentality is that i'm saving lives and i don't need to tip so much i'm already doing so much yeah you know? or i but, think it's just the people that don't tip at all sometimes you're just like 
Wow. Yeah. Like tip something, you know, they are still working for their tips. Like they don't have to rely on it, but like at least show some kind of appreciation. Right? Yeah. I, I just never, um, when I worked in, in the industry, I just never demanded it from people. If right. I saw shitty tips, I'm like, Okay, it's just one of those tables. Yeah, and I would just know? take it as that. I'm like, oh, well, they didn't tip. It's cool. Um, but I got tipped a lot from this person, so it's cool. Right. It makes up for it, you know? Yeah. So I think it's all about perspective. Yeah. What is the most you've ever been tipped? I don't remember. I don't remember, but all I know is that when I was working as a bartender, like, people would tip a lot in ridiculous amounts. And I'm really? like, holy shit. Like, I just, what's, yeah. Like, what's a lot? I don't know, like, even to me, for, like, making a drink for someone, and they tip me 20 bucks, I'm like... Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. I'm like, are you sure? Like, some people have tipped, like, $50 just for making drinks for, for one person, or it's like... Mm, what did you provide with that service, though? Huh? Nothing. It's just the clientele. Mm -hmm. Like, it just depends mm -hmm. on the people. Like, some people just have money. It'll be, like, maybe the older guys, and they're ordering, like, whiskey on the rocks, you know, like, very sophisticated drinks, right? And yeah. they're just like, okay, well, here's my $20 for, your, for the whiskey, and here's $50 on top of that. I'm like, but why? Like, I just what like that's yeah. way more i don't know whenever it's more than what they're paying for i'm just like that's so much just for me yeah. to make you one thing which is crazy i got a pet peeve that i want to say what so a lot of restaurants the servers are the bus boys so yeah oh yeah that's right so when they clean up a table you know they are this is where they are okay to put their fingers in four cups mm -hmm. to carry after someone, you know, drank out of it and stuff like that, it's disgusting, but you get to wash your hands after, right? But I see a lot of servers who clean up a table and then they come to us to give us our food or refill something without washing their with hands. The same, with, with the, the same, same dirty hands. With the same hands, yeah. With, especially, okay. Okay, yeah. Here's another one. <laughs> Ever since COVID, everyone's wearing gloves. Yeah. But the fact that you wear gloves to clean... And wear gloves to, I don't know, wait on us and do the and touch the food, the money and everything. Like, that's dirty, dude. I see people with some brown ass gloves and the color is supposed to be blue. Ew. <laughs> and they're giving us stuff. And I'm just like, what? Change the glove out, dude. Yeah, I you think after I mean? COVID, like everyone but notices these it, things now. If, if gloves cost too much money, just wash your hands. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, that's, that's all, man. Just wash your hands frequently. That's what you're supposed to do at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know, and people don't do that. So, I don't know. I feel like we went from tipping culture to how to serve at a restaurant. Um, I mean, I think because you have personal experience. So, like, you can, you have some things that can be beneficial, like, to add to it, right? You're making some really valid points that, like, I have never thought about. But especially after COVID and, and people um, getting sick more often and things like that, and then us having kids and we're always constantly getting sick, like, we have to be careful about these things because we see your parents, my parents, and, like, we don't want to get sick and then get them sick, right? you know, from I people mean, just not being more careful. I just... I just don't want. And you're a germaphobe. So I just don't want to eat bad. and drink other people's bacteria. That's yeah. all. It's like, who knows what gets transmitted from that? It's not just normal bacteria. What if there's diseases that can carry? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. Very you know, true. But it's like, um, it's like when you guys go to the dentist and they don't practice good hygiene, mm -hmm. and let's say that. Um, there's like the when I go to the dentist and there's an old lady who likes to do x-rays, right? And so she's wearing a brand new pair of gloves. Great. She's putting the little black x-ray things into my mouth, right? Getting her fingers all up in there. And then, and then she's like, okay, uh, here's, here's the blanket thing. And then I'm going to step outside and turn on the stuff, right? So she'll, use, she'll put her fingers all up in my mouth with the x-ray rectangle things the trays and then now she's going to put that blanket over me that probably never gets cleaned and then she's going to move the x-ray machine to my face and angle it right the handles all that stuff and then she's going to go outside and start pushing the the light that switch. makes me wonder though i'm okay. like do they use one hand like to put it in your mouth and then they, they no. use another hand to touch <laughs> i've seen them use both hands <laughs> I have and then 
when they're done, they're going to come back to my mouth, stick their fingers in, to take it, it out, out. Yeah. and then repeat it like 10 more times. And I'm like, but then when damn. They're, when they're doing that to take the x-ray, they're mostly touching. No, they're in my mouth. <laughs> because, yes, in the front, but once they get the back ones, that's hard yeah. for you to bite down. They're going all up in there. You know? And so then you have the dentist who's like, you know, using the same tools, but they 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 replace the heads of every mm-hmm. tool. And sometimes, you know, the the spit and the liquids go on the actual tool and not just the heads. So now when you reuse those, is there a form of herpes on there? That's is there a form of side comes in? <laughs> right. And I'm like, dude. Who knows what the last person had? And they have some kind of oral disease, right? Yeah. I don't want that on me. So it's like, I just want things to be clean, man. I feel like we're getting so sidetracked from like tipping culture to like just. <laughs> I'm just saying, dude. Specific. Like, I mean, I get what you're saying, right? But then it's like when it, when it goes down to that, you're like, okay, well, these people who are like essentially saving your teeth or your life and all of that stuff, like uh, they're getting paid enough where they don't have to rely on you to tip them to take care of you. But then like. It's just sanitation, man. Like at the same time, after she did all the x-ray stuff, now she's going back to the keyboard on the computer and going type, 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 type. And I'm like, oh, fuck, dude. Who else typed on that on that keyboard? (laughs) And then, you know what I mean? Like, dude, it's just so dirty. Yeah. So. But going back to the topic. (laughs) Of tipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. (laughs) When I I was trying to compare like um, other places and compare it to like the U.S., right? And I feel like for... uh, Overall, the general standard for other countries um, is around like 10%. So why is the U.S. so, so much? I don't know. Because we expect more. Yeah. And, and 10%. We're entitled. Maybe. I don't know. A lot of servers do think they're entitled, though. Yeah. It, it's 10% um, in other countries. And in the U.S., the minimum is like fi- the standard is like 15%. Um, and there are places... Uh, a lot of Asian countries and Japan specifically where um, they would even be insulted if you try to tip them. Like they generally don't accept tips. I remember back in the days when you go eat at a Chinese restaurant and no matter how much you order, you know, when you're talking about like under a hundred bucks, you're talking about like, you know, 40 bucks, 60 bucks, whatever it is. People just tip like $3. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that, that's it. And, and that's standard. And, some, and the change, yeah. You know, Three dollars. Uh, I don't see no more than five mm-hmm. or six dollars, but that's only at Chinese restaurants, and they don't even care. Yeah. You know, but also is it because they're also not that clean? You know, like I, I, don't, I don't know. know. But <laughs> I don't want to make. But why? Any why is it like that? You know. Yeah, I don't know. I think be. I don't know because shit. I don't know. <laughs> I, do don't, you, I don't want to speak for them. Do you feel like? The more money people have, they tip less. The, the more successful they are. I mean, I don't know. There are situations where people will be like, oh, the most like there are a lot. <laughs> there are a lot of people that bash like celebrities, for example, that like um, go out like Kylie Jenner, for example. Right. She's like a millionaire and people are always um, bashing her because she'll go out and, and and she'll like get free bottle service and other things or even with food, but she never tips people like never so, tips. I'll, I'll back that up. I used to work at an A-list restaurant, two restaurants. OK, when I was doing sushi and A-list, I'm talking about like Leonardo DiCaprio, um, Russell Crowe, like these kind of A-listers. Mm-hmm. And I would I would serve them directly as a server. Or I would be their personal sushi chef. I would give them extra things, make them some special, some custom stuff that's never, not even on the menu that came from my head, my ideas, you know, and I would give them exceptional service. And uh, I don't get any extra tip ever. It's just standard. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't even remember seeing the tip because uh, I don't deal with the bill as a sushi chef. Like I, it goes to, that server. server there right. so i don't get to see the extra tip mm-hmm. you know but i've never been handed extra cash from a celebrity and it would be like at least five celebrities a day that i would see oh wow well i you mean know? i feel like um 
because there's like no i don't know right because i didn't know about like sushi chefs getting tipped out directly really because we're usually not at the bar but i, I feel like um people generally think like oh we just tip out the server then they'll tip out the chefs and whatever else i don't yeah, know yeah. i have no idea yeah i get it but i'm just like you know when i see people give me side tips it's usually other hustlers mm, yes that's yes. what i see i'll I see someone different. who's like maybe five to ten years older than me mm -hmm. and they look like they've hustled their whole life they're doing well now and they appreciate it those guys are so cool they will give me the extra because they've been there they yep. know yeah yeah so i don't know man tipping culture is crazy nowadays do we need to tip that much i don't think so man i just don't know how this all came together i think it's more about survival and i get that part of it but i'm still gonna be fair um i'll tip you good if you do good um uh, i'm gonna tip you less if you're shitty that, yeah. that's about it yeah you and know? even then even if we get the shittiest service we'll still tip because you know one yeah. time i went to go eat with a group of friends um and i got the worst service ever my food was horrible where it's like i, I forgot what it was either there's a hair in my food or something and, that happens a lot. and they wouldn't <laughs> change the food oh that's they wouldn't weird. do anything about it and so at the end of the meal I tipped less, and my friend yelled at me so bad. I would have not and tipped. And we got in such a big fight about it where it was just, it was really bad. And I'm just like, what? And she was a server too. And yeah. I'm like, I get it. I get it. You're a server. Yeah, me too. But look at what just happened. Why do you want me to tip 20% right now? I would not you know? have tipped. And if they didn't change my food and because I wasn't going to eat it anyway, I would not have paid for it. Yep. Yeah, there's no way. Like, that's crazy. So, yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know. Um, you. Yeah. <laughs> that's insanitary. It's crazy. So, yeah. I don't know. Let, let us know what you guys think. You know, I'm going to put a poll on here on Spotify. And you guys, you know, pick the poll of how much you guys tip. Yeah, it's all anonymous. Okay. Yes. So, I want to see where this poll goes. And uh, also put it in the comments. YouTube, Spotify, what you guys do. How you guys think as servers and busboys, you know. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, and if you guys are new, uh, make sure to follow and subscribe. We are on uh, all podcast platforms and social media. Uh, so till next time, we'll see you on Love and Rice.